Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Steve again. Uh, time for another Thrash Metal Monday. Um, I'm not going to do these every week, but uh, maybe every few weeks. Um, let's jump in. Uh, so first up, the first thing I listened to this morning, just to get going, was uh, a little bit of S.O.D., Stormtroopers of Death, Speak English or Die. Um, this is the reissue that came out a few years ago. Um... Somehow I ended up with two of them and didn't realize it until this morning. But uh, um, they did a real good job on this reissue. And uh, it's got uh, Live in Tokyo from 1999. Um, not to be confused with Live at Budokan, uh, which is a fantastic album. Um, the gimmick behind that one is it's called Live at Budokan, but it was recorded in New York City. Or in, was it New York City? I think it was New York City. Uh, they did a great job on this, though. Definitely not politically correct now. Um, in all honesty, it wasn't really politically correct at the time, which was the whole point of this record. Uh, really good. Worth grabbing, though, if you don't have this. Or if, you, if, if you're a thrash fan and haven't heard this, uh, you're just really missing out. Next up, one of my favorites from one of my favorite bands, the debut album from Arizona's Sacred Reich. Uh, this is the, the most recent reissue. Um, I still need an original pressing of this one and of Independent. Uh, Independent's been hard. I've put in like three or four offers on eBay and YouTube, and they always get shot down. Uh, and the price keeps going up. I wish I'd have bought it three or four years ago when I first started really looking hard for it. Well, you can get it for like 60 bucks, but uh, it is what it is. They did a good job on these. Um, so when they announced all these reissues, just being the geek collector that I am, they did uh, a pressing of 100 uh, that were Europe only of all the albums. Um, so I ordered from Europe so I could get the ones that were limited to 100. And now you can get them here in the U.S. for, for uh, you know, five or six more uh, bucks more than what I paid for them at the time. Um, but, I, you know, did I need it? No. You know, I've got another copy of this from, a, from like 10 or 12 years ago, but uh, still... Just really killer thrash. If you guys haven't uh, checked out Sacred Reich, um, Sacred Reich is uh, part of the kind of the second wave of thrash uh, from the late '80s, and uh, they were super. Uh, everything was political. You know, a lot of the early thrash bands had songs that were political. Everything all, Sacred Reich was was a hundred percent all about politics, and uh, they just did a great job. And I was hooked. From the moment I heard this band, uh, still one of my all-time favorites right here. Next up, Municipal Waste, The Art of Partying. I was really late to these guys. Um, I'm not too much into uh, beer drinking thrash or pothead thrash where they're just talking about partying and getting high. Um, so I never gave these guys a chance and that's not what this is. I mean, there, there is a lot of that in here, the art of partying, the inebriated or inebriator, um, chemically altered, but there's some really good stuff in here as well. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I, like I said, I, I was not into these guys. I was super late to them. I didn't get into them until I saw them live. Uh, and they were really killer. I ended up buying one of their records there. And now anytime I see one of their records that I don't have, I buy it. Um, just a, a classic of the of the late 2000s. Um, or early 2000s. Sorry, this was 2007. Um, they were w one of the first of the... Uh, or really one of the bands that kind of kept thrash going during that, um, you know, mid to late 90s to mid to late 2000s. Uh, when there wasn't a whole lot of thrash coming out and uh they were kind of that bridge there uh really killer album though next up one of my other favorite thrash bands and uh, this is kind of when they're, they're they're changing their sound a little bit the drums are getting a little bit more tribal um fantastic album though this is this is the album where i really got into this band um, this was my favorite album for a long time. Now that I've got uh, over the years, I've gotten more deeper into their albums. I like the earlier raw stuff that I didn't like at, at this time. Um, but this is Chaos AD from Sepultura. Uh, this is one of the recent reissues, 2017 reissue. Um, 
and they did a really good job on it. Uh, I was just in the mood for Sepultura. This wasn't a new one for me. Um, just needed to listen to it. Next up, Kill 'Em All from Metallica. Can't have a thrash day without listening to some Metallica. Um, I hadn't played any of their albums for a while, so I went ahead and pulled this one out. This is the uh, the 2008 pressing, the one that was half speed mastered at Mobile Fidelity. Um, they weren't Mobile Fidelity pressings; they were just mastered by the guys there. Um, they're okay. It's probably of my of my Kill 'Em All pressings. The first Megaforce pressing is probably the best sounding, followed by the one that came in the box set, um, and then this one. Um, for a while, these were getting pretty pricey. They're coming down in price now. Um, but now that now that you've got the Walmarts that sound really good and the modern reissues that sound really good, I would just stick with those. I wouldn't go search these out or or spend the two hundred bucks or whatever the original Megaforces are going for at this point. Um, Unless you're just one of those collectors that has to have an original. But uh, it's still a pretty good pressing. Next up, this is a, a, a band. I'm so glad they're finally repressing their albums because originals are, are $150, $200. $200. I got lucky and found their sophomore album about a year ago for a good price. Uh, and uh, was super stoked when I put it in Discogs a few months back, maybe six months ago, uh, to see that... that um, all of their albums had gotten reissued. So I ended up uh, ordering the other three that I didn't have, I believe. Uh, and this is the debut from Intruder, Live to Die. Um, this got redone about 10 years later with a different album cover. I've always loved this album cover. It, it's super dark. Um, really killer thrash, though. Really, really dig these guys. And I don't see a lot of people talking about them in the VC, which is kind of sad because they're a killer band. But uh, a little bit of intruder. Next up, I've shown a, a couple of this series. This is the uh, uh, the series on Evil Dead Records, the bootleg series, unofficial series um, of the demos from all the Bay Area bands. Uh, oh, Bay Area, there's there's one from the the New York and uh, New Jersey thrash bands too. This one has Legacy, uh, which is Testament, Death Angel, and Exodus on it. Um, I have heard. Uh, the Exodus demos, that was nothing new, and I've heard the Death Angel demos. What's really cool on here is the Legacy demo. Uh, again, Legacy uh, changed their name uh, right before their first album came out to um, Testament. Um, so all of these songs are have been released under Testament. The difference here is Burnt Offerings um, is different, and it's very cool. Um, the speed's a little bit different, uh, and, and it, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I like, I like the demo versions of all the songs here and I'll, I'll go ahead and you can see what, what songs are there for each band. Um, the legacy are the best sounding, uh, demos, the Exodus are the worst sounding and then the death angels are just, uh, are just so, so what's amazing though, is, uh, this is death, one of death angels, early demos from 83. This is when the guys, uh, I think the drummer was 14 at the time. And uh, it, it was three three cousins, I believe, and then one other one other guy. Um, they were all Filipina or uh, Filipino, if I remember correctly. Um, but the drummer was the youngest; he was fourteen, and the other guys in the band were sixteen, I believe. And I remember hearing uh, a story from Kerry King years ago, uh, where he was talking about they had to was it Kerry? I believe it was Kerry King that that told the story where uh, they used to sneak the drummer in, in the back. They would have him help them carry their gear in to sneak him in so that he could play in the club because he was too young uh, to even be in there to play. I believe you had to be 16 is what they said. Anyway, um, next up, uh, Faith or Fear came back after like a decade and released some uh, uh, another album. Their first album is fantastic. It's a thrash classic. It's, uh, uh, I, if you're into thrash, you more than likely are familiar with it. Uh, but a few years back, um, I guess this, yeah, tw this is 2020. I believe in 2009 is when this originally came out on CD, though. Um, but Faith or Fear came back. So almost 20 years later, I guess, with uh, Instruments of Death. Now, it gets a bit confusing. Um, I've heard that this was stuff. I read in one article or, or one website 
that this was stuff they recorded for their sophomore album that never got released. Um, and then I read that this is stuff that was demos for their sophomore album that they re-recorded -re -re in 2009. Um, so I'm not sure which is true. Um, it's still fantastic. Uh, I, I really dig this. It's just a, it's a really killer band. If you haven't checked out the first Faith or Fear, um, I would grab that first. It's not super expensive. I, I I believe I bought my copy for thirty bucks like two year a year and a half two years ago. Um, so not crazily expensive for a thrash album, but uh, one you should definitely have in the collection. And again, this is the this would be their second album, Instruments of Death. Next up, one of the most un, uh, underrated, not talked about thrash bands. Um, these are it's this this is a a band I didn't get into until maybe ten years ago. I didn't even know about them. Um, probably, in my opinion, the best um, uh, British thrash band. Um, they're from England. It's uh, I believe they're from England, um, but they're uh, Shattered Existence. Uh, uh, this is Shattered Existence. I can't speak. This is Shattered Existence, uh, the the debut album from Zentrix. Um, I've got I've got like four or five of their albums. They have another one that just came out uh, within the last year or so. Just a fantastic album. Music and Vinyl has been repressing all their stuff because originals are hard to find. But uh, I mean, this is a great jumping off point with them. Fantastic album, a must have. Next up, not really a must-have. This was kind of a transition album. Not really thrash per se. Uh, this was a band that kind of started off as thrash and, 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 and at this point was kind of moving to their what, what the sound they would become most famous for, I guess. Um, this is Prong, uh, Prove You Wrong. This is probably my least favorite Prong album, but it's still an album that I really like. Um, they had kind of found their sound here finally. So they started off almost like a hardcore band on their, their earliest debut. And then they went the thrash route. Uh, the thrash albums are some of my favorites. Um, and then they started adding industrial and groove into their sound. And that's kind of where this is. This is where they incorporate all that into one album that's cohesive. Um, and then they followed it up with the cleansing, which was a huge hit multi, uh, I believe it was multi platinum for them, which, uh, the songs, um, uh, snap your fingers, snap your neck comes from, um, and then the album after that, I'm drawing a blank on it. It's gonna, it'll come to me in a minute. Um, the album after the cleansing is actually my favorite, but, uh, still a good album, uh, still worth checking out. If you're a prong fan, this is one you should have. Uh, next up, a little bit of Flotsam and Jetsam, one of my all-time favorites, another hometown Phoenix band. Uh, this is the Flotzilla EP, 12-inch single. Um, this one's kind of funny. Uh, I hear a lot of people talking about this should have, these songs should have been on the debut. Um, however, this wasn't released till after, so I don't know if these were technically recorded as part of the Doomsday for the Deceiver um, album, or if they recorded for the second album. Um, but Flotzilla was on their set list for quite a while. Uh, and I Live uh, I Live You Die, I believe that was on there, ended up being on their second album. So I believe this was actually recorded with the second album. This was this was put out the same year as the second album. Um, but, and, but as they've done reissues later on, in the in the late 90s and 2000s they've added flotzilla to the debut album which kind of makes sense because it was the introduction of flotzilla but uh um i just think the chrono the chronology is wrong for that song and it should have been on the second album but uh that said really happy to finally have this one in the collection it was it took me a while to find this one in good condition and then last but not least an album that was on everybody's top 10 list last year um i no oh, i'm sorry well, maybe it'll be on everybody's top 10 list this year. Sorry, it's 2023. Everybody's talked about how great this album is. I'm kind of split on it. I don't know. Um, I've given it two or three spins. Um, I bought it when it came out. It just ended up buried up my stack somewhere, and I finally pulled it out. Um, I'm kind of split on it. There's a couple songs I love on here, 
and the rest of the album just kind of runs together. Um, you guys, give me your thoughts on it. Uh, maybe I, I'm alone. I'm gonna get a few more spins before I put it back in there. Maybe it'll grow on me. I mean, it's a band that I love. It's a band that I just saw live uh, last month. Uh, they blew me away. How amazing they were live. But uh, um, I'm just I'm just kind of split on this one. But this is uh, scorched from the mighty overkill. And that's it, guys. Um, I hope everybody's doing good. Have a great week. And uh, I'll see you soon. Later, VC.